Well, good morning to you. I thought we would start by talking about Thanksgiving, because it is a, a lovely holiday, a time of great blessings for many of us, and a time to remember that uh, there are many that don't share in our blessings. And so I want to make sure that everybody appreciates all the wonderful things that are happening to take care of the homeless around our county. Places like the Fillmore are feeding the homeless. Bethesda Cares feeding the homeless. We have an enormous number of organizations that are really always step up, like MANA, for example. We need to have more food delivered to MANA. The demands on our MANA, excuse me. We need to have more food delivered to MANA because we have an extraordinary need in our community to make sure that those that are hungry have an opportunity to have good food. So I wanted to make sure that you were aware of all the things that we do at this time of year, but also to suggest that we do it all year round and remind people of the opportunity to serve in a volunteer capacity and our county does try to make it easy. We have a, a website, montgomeryserves.org, volunteers slash holiday dash help. I'll give this to you. I'd be grateful if you would spread the word that we have a lot of folks uh, that, that could use our help. And so this is a time of year where we really want to make sure that people appreciate all the ways in which we can take care of one another. So, let me also, and I'll give you a list of some of the other things that are taking place in our county in which we actually don't need volunteers because so many people do step up at this time of year, which is why it's important to remember that, you know, we need to do this more than just Thanksgiving. Um, let me also observe that the, the county is hosting a blood drive, uh, and that's very important. Uh, the Red Cross has major need for blood donations after the hurricane, and so this is another way in which we can step up and help one another, and this is a season where we do want to help one another. Speaking of helping one another, oh, terrible segue. The blood drive is today, I believe, from 8 till 2, okay? Across the street at the executive office building. Okay. So let's get that word out. Do we have any radio here? <laughs> so let's get that word out on blogs, etc. Um, yes, there's another one. There'll be another blood drive on December 21 at the executive office building. I'm getting good coaching today from my team. Um, so, speaking of asking for help, we had a meeting with our state delegation uh, last week on what's called the state priorities meeting, and uh, the county executive and I uh, made clear our number one priority is transportation funding. Uh, we've made it clear that in the absence of transportation funding, our county's ability to continue to be the economic engine of the state of Maryland is going to be severely compromised. Our competitive position vis-a-vis -vis Fairfax is going to be severely compromised and our quality of life will be severely compromised. So we absolutely have to have transportation funding. Towards that end, I am announcing today that we are going forward with a transportation funding summit in Annapolis on December 12th, in which we will talk about the urgent need for transportation funding and the consequences if we don't get it. We have an extraordinary list of sponsoring organizations, which I will share with you. Starting with the uh, Greater Washington Board of Trade, you have labor, you have business, you have transportation activists, you have communities, you have Prince George's County, you have every 
stakeholder really in the state of Maryland is actively participating and supporting this effort to have a transportation summit and to really focus on how critically important this is for our state. There was a report issued last week that I commend to you uh, by the state that talked about the options for transportation funding. And if you don't have a copy of it, I'd be happy to get it for you. Uh, but basically, it says we need to move forward, and there are a number of ways you can move forward. Um, so that if you're not able to pass a state gas tax or a state sales tax, then here are some other options that you have to explore. So that will be at the forefront of this conversation as well, because we really have to make progress here. And Councilmember Leventhal and his staff have taken the lead in pulling this together and done an extraordinary job. This is not easy work. Uh, and under their leadership, I think we will pull this off on December 12th in Annapolis from 9 till 1, in which we will bring together the leaders across the state to hear from experts talking about how critically important this issue is. We hope the governor will appear. We certainly will be inviting the governor. Uh, we need to keep this on the front burner. So we're doing everything we know how to underscore how important this is, not just for Montgomery County, but for, I mean, Baltimore's got the red line. The report just, just came out, talked about how there are three transportation projects alone that will cost $4.7 billion, for which we have no money. The red line, the purple line, the CCT. And that's without attending to all the other transportation needs that we have and communities across our state have. So it just underscores how critically important it is that we find revenue source to address the situation. I was also pleased Moving on, oh, and let me just say, uh, obviously, we have seen, looked across the river and seen what's going on in Northern Virginia. We have seen the hot lanes that have started up and people look across that river and they say, really, what's going on in Maryland? We can't do this? We can't do anything? And so the answer has to be no. We can do something. We must do something. Uh, we're going to make the current situation at the American Legion Bridge worse uh, with the hot lanes. I didn't see the reports today of what it looked like, but uh, I imagine it wasn't pretty. Uh, and we have a proposal in Fairfax and Montgomery County submitted a proposal to our two states to say you have to use the shoulder. You have to do something now. We need an interim solution so that that particular situation does not get dramatically worse. So it is certainly our hope that Maryland and Virginia will come together and see this as an opportunity to make some progress on that particular segment. But our needs are so much greater than that, and so that's why we're under Councilmember Leventhal's leadership uh, pulling together this statewide effort in Annapolis. I was pleased that the Montgomery Business Development Corporation uh, announced that it had hired a, a new president, uh, their first president. Uh, our county council has supported this initiative, uh, and we need the business community to play a more prominent role in business retention and attraction. And it is certainly my hope that this new president will help us in that regard. And finally, let me just say that we are going to have a budget forum on November 27th, not 29th, excuse me, November 29th, we're having a budget forum uh, in which we are sitting down with the leaders in our community and making sure that everybody appreciates the constraints that uh, uh, the next council president, uh, Council Member Navarro, will deal with next year. Uh, and just how difficult uh, the changes in state law with respect to maintenance of effort uh, make things for our county and, and balancing the needs of our county's other demands with our education requirements. So it will be a, a very candid conversation, a presentation made by our team 
uh, and then opening it up for questions and answers. Um, so we felt like it was important to reach out to uh, the broader community to make sure that they understood uh, the stakes with respect to the changes in state law that have taken place. With that, why don't I open up to you guys? Help me here, guys. Um, can we get a copy of the sponsor of the... Um... You can. Thank you. <laughs> Ask and you shall receive. And then that this is the season of giving. Too, but that's yep. Oh, excuse me. Somebody else could do this probably a little more delicately than I. <laughs> we'll need one more, Josh. Thank you. But you'll see, really pulled together an incredible array of folks that are supporting this effort. Um, about the business development corporation and naming the president, so the, the council created this two years ago. That's great. Um, is there, is that, I mean, this is, seems to be a constant issue, but is the county already behind Fairfax in, in this effort, in this outreach effort to try to attract businesses? Are we behind? I guess what I, I would answer in the following way. We need to do more. Okay. I don't know if we're behind as much as I feel and a number of my colleagues and I think all of us feel like we need to do more. So, and we need the business community's guidance. Um, one of the models that Fairfax uses is has a, an independent economic development authority. We don't in Montgomery County. And so the Business Development Corporation is sort of, if you will, a hybrid approach. It is that we retain our economic development authority uh, as it is, but we have the advice and counsel and hopefully assistance of the business community through this corporation. So we're trying to have, if you will, the best of both worlds. And hopefully with this new president, we'll, we'll achieve that. What's the status of the digital innovation officer? Is that person on board now? It is indeed. Is that, can you elaborate? I can. Uh, Dan Hoffman was selected by the county executive uh, to serve as our chief innovation officer, which is what I assume you were referring to. Mm -hmm. I apologize. So uh, Mr. Hoffman uh, comes at this uh, knowing our county, knowing technology, uh, and, and actually having a wonderful work in human services. Um, and so he was selected by the county executive. I met with him uh, a few days ago to hear his initial thoughts. Uh, and I think uh, we're going to be making great progress. He's going to be talking with Philadelphia and uh, Boston and San Francisco to see what work they've been doing and how they've uh, succeeded. And uh, I'm quite confident that he'll do a very good job. So what are his priorities? What is he working on first? I, I think you should uh, really check with Mr. Hoffman directly. I don't want to speak for him in that regard. But I, I, I was impressed with how he's going about his business. Will the public see what he's doing? Well, will they see it? Is yes. he working with the business community? Yes. He's already has his meetings scheduled. I mean, he literally just started uh, two weeks ago. Okay. Okay, November, I think, is... Uh, uh, November is his second week, so give him a moment, uh, but he is meeting with all the stakeholders, uh, and uh, I was very impressed with how he's going about making sure that he has a good game plan going forward. Is he from here? Yes. Yes. Mm, maybe not. He was very active in White Flint. He was the leader of the Randolph Hills uh, Citizens Association, so he's been very active. Uh, on a community level, he served on one of our task force, so he knows government uh, and led the technology conversation with respect to it was our organizational reform commission, uh, and he led the conversation with respect to technology on that, urging us to go to the cloud when many of us didn't know what the cloud was, uh, and so he really he brings 
to bear a lot of the skills that you want. Somebody that knows the county, knows the citizenry, and knows this work and has been on, if you will, the cutting edge. Um, is it a little too early for you to sort of uh, look into the Chevy Chase Way sector plan? Because I know it's still at planning board. There, there's some controversy there, of course. There is always controversy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yes, it is too early. Uh, I really wait for the planning board to conclude its work. Uh, before and, and sends it over to us before I get involved. Um, I, I respect the work of our planning board and want them to do their work. And my hope is that when they do their work that they uh, address as many of the controversial issues as possible and then when it comes to us that uh, we take it from there. But as the district council member and currently as the president of the council, I really want to make sure that they do their job first and then I'll do mine. What else we got, gang? The Regional Transportation Funding Summit is open to the public? Yes. And um, is it going to be a series of presentations, or do you know how this, what the format might be? Uh, we are still working on the speakers with respect to that, so we're finalizing the program itself. But uh, it's certainly our expectation that we will have a, a number of prominent presenters mm -hmm. who will help frame the conversation for us. And you can speak with uh, Councilmember Leventhal's staff over your left shoulder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, I know you said, and I should know, that probably how maintenance of effort makes things tough, but in a nutshell, how does maintenance of effort affect Montgomery County? The way in which our, the new law on maintenance of effort affects us is that it makes it imperative that we know with more certainty than we'll ever have our budget situation going forward because our ability to go below maintenance of effort has essentially been eliminated. So now we are locked in over half of our budget locked in in a way that it was not locked in previously and when you're talking about half of your budget and you don't have any flexibility whatsoever that by definition changes the nature of your budgeting process and it becomes much more relevant since our county has been more generous to education than maintenance of effort we have exceeded maintenance of effort by approximately 600 million dollars and what this does, the law makes it much more difficult for us to exceed maintenance of effort because once you exceed it, it becomes the base going forward. And it means you can't get off it. So the concern of those of us that support education is that the consequence of this law is that instead of maintenance of effort being the floor, it will also simultaneously for our county be the ceiling and that had not been the case previously. Um, and you, I know, I think I've even written about it before, but I can't remember. You said new law, but when, how, when was it passed? In the last legislative session. And our county executive and our county council tried very hard to get amendments in that would have made this more acceptable, and we just were not successful. Anything else, gang? Well, happy holidays to you. Thanks. Have a good one.